Hey guys, it's David from Infaller. Today, I'm going to be doing another track breakdown after over a year since the Skydreamer one of our most popular track off the Cloudfield EP, Particles. Now, Particles actually started as a color house entry for one of Sharks' uh, producer challenges in his Discord server. But as it got worked on more, I just really liked it and wanted to work on it and like make its own thing, you know? And I'm really happy on how it uh, came out. But that's pretty much it for the, the history of Particles, I guess. Let's just go right into it. So the intro actually starts pretty simple. There's not m too much going on in the intro. Basically all it is is this like cool little ARP loop from uh, Calm True sample pack. So basically this is what it sounds like without the effects. So basically just making it more of a decay and not as like sustained. Basically all that is, we have like a little vocoder here. Just adding like some cool texture to it. Vocoder is very good at just like when you have like a really pretty sound, you just slap it on there and it's just, it just makes it really cool sounding basically. So we have that and then we have the LFO, which is making it thinner sounding. Basically just making the decay shorter. And then we have the EQ taking out the lows and then some reverb for later that gets like automated later and a frequency shifter for the buildup. So I will go over that later. But yeah, just a just a cool little sample. You can get this off Splice or the Comtru sample pack. Really cool sample. Basically just like a, a synth wavy type saw pluck. So that's basically I would say the main sound kind of is like this cool little ARP sound um, and then like the intro Reese as well. Basically, whenever we do these sorts of like resounds and I'm lazy and I don't want to add a separate sub, I think I went over this in the Skydreamer breakdown, but basically just cutting out the sides, like the, the stereo stuff and the lows, so we don't get any like weird stereo sub nonsense. So just a cool little thing you can do here in uh, Pro Q3, you can get rid of the, uh, you can change the stereo placement and make it side and get rid of that lows. And then just a balance basically to change the volume later. But the actual main sound, basically all it is is a detuned saw that's being low passed with a little bit of distortion. That's pretty much all what a Reese is. Very, very simple, but very effective. I love doing these little like soft intro Reese's. So yeah, that with this, pretty much the main sound. And also, if you're wondering what the, that cool little sound in the beginning that makes it sound all, like, bad but kind of cool in a way is, uh, this, lossy. Which basically, if I turn this off and just make it pure lossy, basically just makes it sound like a really crappy, like, mp3. Uh, but it's, like, strangely weird because it's, like, the artifacts and, like, it just sounds, it just sounds really cool. Uh, so definitely recommend that plugin. Uh, got it like not so long ago, and it's really cool to do stuff like that. And also, if you're wondering what this cheating thing is, it's basically just to turn up the the whole song. Like later, like you can see later that it, you know it turns off and it turns back on. It's so it, we can make the song louder in certain parts. So the the reason why it's called cheating. You have those two sounds, and then we have this little sign pluck. Which is basically just a sign pluck, but reverbed a little bit and a lot of delay. Like I'm talking so much delay that it starts to distort and it just continues forever. Really cool if you want to make something very atmospherical. So very, very cool. Again, literally just a sign pluck, sign, and you turn down the sustain and the decay. And that's all that sound is. But it sounds just really cool with a bunch of delay. <laughs> you can see it sounds very funny without it. But it's just... This super wide sound that adds a lot. Here's the mini if you if you were curious. But yeah, so you have like these three sounds already make like a, a decent just this is basically the whole intro. Just building like a really nice intro atmospherical like thing. Um, and then we go into the pads. Now this is what really fills it up in the background and makes it like just a little bit more atmospherical and I keep saying that word but it's just a little bit more clear a little bit more you know pretty so we have this 
just a little pad. I know last time I didn't really get into where I got my pads, but I'll definitely link in the description where I get these pads from. This pad, however, I, ha I have like no idea. Hi, Future David here. So this pad is actually from the SM101 Piano Atmospheres pack, and it's called Fields of Green. You can find it on Splice, but I'll also link it in the description. All right, thank you. Basically just a little nice pretty pad adding some high end because it's there's just not a lot of high end So increase the high end of that and then after a little bit It gets a little bit more like crystally from this crystallizer which I went over this in the sky dreamer breakdown But this plugin is really really good at creating like basically the best way to describe it is crystallize ish sounds very very pretty And then we have this other intro pad which this I know is definitely on Splice. I know VR has used this pad a lot as well. So it's, a, it's like a, a fan favorite. Very, very cool pad. If I turn off Stretch Pro, you can kind of hear what it's supposed to sound like. It has like this cool rhythm in the background that's like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. So it's very, very cool. Making or finding like rhythmic pads can really help add more rhythm to whatever part you're trying to add. And then we have this AU5 pad, which I believe I used in Skydreamer as well. This pad I know for a fact is from the uh, AU5 remix of Virtual Riot, We're Not Alone. From the very intro of that song. Again, just a very pretty pad. If you see my last year tutorial, you'll know that I also used it in Skydreamer. It's just a very, very pretty pad. Again, it's not too hard to make pads, but I just really like the high end of this pad. Because this part I really wanted to like make it more things going on, building up. Um, and then we have this Mizu pad which I made with the Mizu sample pack. Which I will also link in the description. The Mizu's one man choir sample pack. Very very cool. It has just like a lot of like cool like just choir samples. So very, very recommended. Mizu's a very cool guy. Uh, love him, so go support his sample pack. Um, but basically, just took one of those and added like a like a fifth layer. So it basically fits on pretty much any key. So that's what it sounds like. So you can hear with the, the bass. And then with all the, the pad stuff going on here that I've shown off. It's a really, really pretty atmosphere. Uh, and then we have this little background arp. Pretty cool. Basically just like a bit crushed saw, I believe. That's like being panned left and right, maybe slightly, and very plucked. With a lot of like reverb and delay. Here, I'll like, if I make it like the, uh, the stretch mode and fix this. Just use this in the background. So here's all the samples that we have so far that I've shown off. Um, and that's basically it, really. There's, like, some downlifters here and some ambience. Which is not from Shikari, which is actually a, uh, a video game, Shikari. Uh, they have, like, a lot of cool ambient samples in that. And, uh, <laughs> we kind of, kind of yoinked a few of them because they loop perfectly and they're just so pretty. So this one is basically just cool little, like, forest ambience. You don't have to go to the extent that we did to get this ambient sample. Literally just look on Splice or look on like the internet. There's all sorts of different like pretty ambient samples like forests and like playground sounds or just like stores. I definitely recommend using ambience in your songs to add a little high end but add some noise in the background so it's not like super super like kind of empty sounding. You can hear without the ambience it just sounds a little less filled but with the ambience... It really adds all that frequencies that we've been missing, like the high end, like the very high end up here. So yeah, that's literally it. Very, very basic intro. Uh, but then in the second half here... So basically more of the same, adding more pads, as you can see here, that I showed off. Just adding like a cool, like, clap going every beat. So basically everything's the same, but now there's like this cool little, like, lead solo. 
which I will show off here. Just some OTT, some EQing, get rid of the nasty frequencies, uh, some reverb and delay. Uh, and basically all that this lead is, it's very, very simple. Here it is. Basically, all that it is is a very, very, it's not super unison, uh, but not as detuned, but the randomness, instead of it being like, like this, it's more uh, turned down so it sounds more, I don't know how to describe it, more like retro because all like the, it's not super wide sounding, it makes it more like mono, and you can see, <laughs> if I hover over, you can see what it's, what it actually, what it does, because I'm not very good at explaining, but basically it just makes it sound really cool, uh, and then it's just low pass a little bit, and this is the vibrato, so after a while, it, with this rise knob, you can make it rise slowly into a vibrato, as you can hear like that. Basically, just make like a, a cool little like sine wave thing here, make it pretty fast, put it on the, the fine knob here, and then increase the rise, and that's how you add simple vibrato. I would recommend when you make the shape, you can save it, so you can save your shape, so I'd recommend doing that. So yeah, you can always have your vibrato ready, up and going, because vibrato is really, really cool. Uh, another fun fact about this lead, actually, is that this lead is actually from a 2016 and Fowler song, if you can believe it. A song that I made almost like seven years ago, which is insane to think about, from Infowler Vision. So you can see the leads are pretty much the same. And honestly, the reason why I did this is because I remember like working on this part right here and I just kept hearing this lead melody again, like in my head. I was like, wait a second, that would work really well here. So basically I just transcribed it back in here and I thought it was really cool. So yes, this lead is like a seven year old lead that I made, but honestly, I think it works. So very, very cool. And also at the end of this little section here, you can hear that cool little like meow. Basically all it is, is it's just going into the same intro section with all the stuff that I mentioned before, but it just has a really high resonance and distortion. That's what makes it sound really cool, like, like acid bassy. So if I turn off the distortion and turn off the res, you can hear, it sounds <laughs> pretty just whatever. Basically, it's just a pluck little Reese. But the, how much like this resonates here, you can see that's what adds its cool sound. So with the distortion as well, just really, really cool sound. And now we have the buildup. So this is the buildup. Buildups are not too interesting as always, but just to explain it, because I know buildups could be a pain. Basically just a low pass kick going up. Basically hitting every single bass note here. So just to create that rhythm of the drop. So it just slowly goes up. Then we have the snare, a disdain snare. So shout out to disdain. So yeah, very, very cool. Very, very simple stuff, just some rides and some claps. The clap from earlier is going on, then we have this A5 crash that I love using. The A5 simple crash huge. So we have this like cool little glitch sound from uh, the Black Octopus Levitation 2, I believe. A lot of cool glitch sounds in that. Uh, so we have that, and then we have this cool little fill also from Levitation 2. So very, very simple stuff. The ARP going, uh, but being frequency shifted at the end. Again, I went over this in the Sky Dreamer tutorial, and there's going to be a lot of connecting things because we, we kind of do some of that stuff. I mean, for buildups, you just want to pitch everything up near the end. You just want to create as much hype as you possibly can. So you can see here. 
slowly goes up. And we also have Endless Smile. I think we used in Skyjam. I forget. Basically, if we didn't go over it before, Endless Smile is just like a cool little like build up plugin that adds hype with like one knob. It's very, very useful if you're very lazy at build ups, which, you know, everyone's lazy at build ups. So you can hear what it does here. You can see it kind of adds like reverb and like turns it up and this like just a bunch of like cool little small effects all into one. Very, very useful. Also, the stereo goes to mono near the end just so the drop is even more like punchy. Like it just shoots out at you because of like the stereo comes back and the volume turns back up and just basically just all sorts of things going on because we also turn down the volume in the build up just so the drop hits a little bit more. I always want to make sure that it actually hits and it doesn't just like you just you have this awesome build up and then it's just nothing. So yeah, uh, again, making risers out of all your sounds is very cool. We have some crowd claps just to add some more background noise. Just a little EQ to take up some har harsh frequencies. And then we have some of the, the bass sounds in the drop just being low passed. Which I'll, I'll go over this in the drop section. But basically, just being low passed. Um, with some, and then also some soft clipper. So with the sub as well. And then you have like this cool little... Yeah. Uh, and then we have this riser. Just a basic little riser for the uh, for the buildup. Uh, then we have some filler bases. I will also go over this in the drop, but just some like cool little sounds from the drop, like being like introduced like a tiny bit. Basically, just like being low passed in, tons of delay uh, and some reverb. Uh, so very cool. And then we have like this cool little like transient uh, little like click thing, just to add some more rhythm and just to add more transient to the rhythm. And then we have this cool little acid bass with, and here's the sub. I don't actually know if we used this acid bass in the drop. I think this was just for the buildup. Uh, so thanks, Izzy. Basically, all it is uh, has some compression, a ton of compression, actually, from OTT. Some chorus to add some, uh, some stereo width. Uh, some disperser to make it even more um, kind of lasery. Very, very important to the sound, actually. It makes it sound way, way better. Um, some EQ, get rid of the lows, and some uh, some harsh frequencies here. And then some Camel Crusher to make it uh, super clean. So yeah, just a cool little acid base. Basically just a saw pluck. That's literally all it is. Um, and then basically just a ton of resonance, as I showed before. You can see it sounds really, <laughs> really stupid. But you can kind of hear, like, with some distortion, it makes it sound really cool. So basically, this is how you make your acid bass. And then as we go further down, uh, we have this, like, cool little almond break. Just being low passed in. Very cool for buildups if you want to just add some, like, more background-ish drums. Uh, so very, very cool. And then the 85 pad from the intro. And then we have the schnoz pad. I highly recommend the Schnoz sound kits. Uh, Schnoz now goes by uh, Zave. Uh, if, so if you know who Zave is or if you know who Schnoz is, highly recommend getting their packs. Very, very cool, like, pad samples and glitch samples and, like, drum samples. So very, very cool. I remember that I actually made this right when I got the Schnoz packs uh, or the Zave packs. Um, so, yeah, very, very cool. So basically, if you want to get that, also will be linked in the description. Um, but, yeah, so this cool little pad. So basically just being like filtered in a little bit uh, with this filter plugin, which I would recommend for if you want something to be filtered like a bunch, instead of using fruity parametric EQ, I would actually recommend using this plugin because it makes it super, super clean. So you can see that it kind of adjusts as it goes through. So basically just a pad layer. If I turn off all the effects, just a pad. Yeah, so you have this OTT. Then you have some EQing to get rid of the, the, all that low end. Decrease the highs a little bit. The filter. Just a little low pass filter for the build up. And then we have this delay. So just pretty simple delay. And then we have the Izzy Special, as I like to call it. Uh, basically, just like automating the reduction of the bit crush. And just having it go just wherever, like this. 
you can hear. It just makes all weird kinds of sounds. So it's just a cool little sound. Just a bunch of like textury, like minimal stuff going on. Um, and then you can see as the name of this, uh, the Vengeance Stab from, I believe, Vengeance New Disco Volume 1. So just a simple like A minor stab just being pitched down to F sharp minor. So you can hear without it. Just like a cool little pad hit. And then we have this weird little like glitch sound in the background if I turn it up. Just a weird glitch sound to add some high end. I don't know where this is from because I believe Izzy added it, but it's just like a cool little high end sample to add some like crystally like weird sounds happening in the high end. And then we have this like orchestral crash. And then this like weird bass thing as it's just described also from Levitation 2. Basically just like a, a weird Reese-ish sound. Again, the ambience, everything going down over here. And then uh, near the end, we have the bass, the weird bass thing being reversed. And then we have this uh, the atonal reverse from Levitation 2 and another reverse from the Oliver sample packs. But that's pretty much it. Just like it, like introducing the drop a little bit, getting the rhythm down so it doesn't sound very jarring when you get to the drop. Very, very basic buildup, and uh, but it works. So now it's time for the, the pre-drop and then the moment you probably have been waiting for. So the pre-drop. Again, another thing that we like to do, also we use in Sky Dreamer, just a nice little square pluck. I think this might be the same one from Sky Dreamer as well. Just doing the key, F sharp, uh, minor. Uh, we have the fill, uh, this little reverse, little mini sweep from Cashmere. Uh, it's basically just this the funny little like minimal notes and then this fill from Levitation 2. Now for the moment you've been waiting for, the drop. So yeah, here's the drop. Let's start off with the drums. So let's just solo all the drums so you can hear what they sound like. Basically just a four on the floor pattern because it's kind of like complex show color housey. So here's the drums. Uh, the drop kick is from the Vengeance New Disco Pack as well. Same with uh, this cool little clap. Um, so very highly recommend the Vengeance New Disco sa uh, sample pack. There's tons of super good drums in there. Same with the uh, closed hats are from the same sample pack. And the ride is actually a Disdain ride. So shout out to Disdain again. <laughs> so we have that and then we have the A5 crash. Um, so yeah, basically just super simple. Just a kick, snare, four on the floor. Every other like thing you have like this cool little like pre-shift... You can hear like this cool little like pre-shift sound. So yep, that's pretty much all the drums. And then the second half, it, basically the second half is just the same, but adding like this like closed hat loop uh, from also the Vengeance new disco sample pack. Some just hi hats, and then just adding more stuff to fill out the, the second half. And then just later on, there's some like cool little sounds that are happening, like this like tom uh, from the, the cashmere sample packs. And then some like reverses, like this like <laughs> really weird, like messed up, like super fast reverse of like the, the A5 crash. So there you go. And then another little mini sweep. Um, but that's pretty much all the drums. Like, and then you have like the ending bit. So yeah, very, very simple. Uh, four on the floor, little house drum stuff. And now the juicy stuff, the actual sounds. We have this like cool little like bell sound in the background that you can't really hear very well. And it only plays in this one section. It never plays again. So you can hear that. Again, just playing the root note. I go up to here. Just a cute little pluck thing that I made. Uh, basically just like a glass lid sample and a sine wave. If I turn off uh, this, you can hear it's just a very like quick, super like cute sound with the sine wave as well. And then it's like comb filter. 
And then just a bunch of effects like reverb and chorus to make it more wide. Two OTTs. I don't know. I don't know why, but there you go. Two OTTs. Uh, delay two. Some dimension expander to make it even more wide. And then the EQ just getting rid of the lows. So it's just like super wide sample. So just like a cute little bell sound to play in the background to fill it up more. Yep, just a little bell. And then we have the wubby saws. So this is like the chord progression, I guess you could say, for this part. Basically just an OTT and getting rid of the lows. Um, but the actual sound is pretty cool. This is actually from our All Nighter 6 song, uh, the breakdown chords. So that's what this preset is from. I forgot about that. Uh, so yeah, basically all it is is just like two saws, one being pitched up, just super detuned. Uh, well, the second layer, here's the first layer. And turn on the resonance. Basically like future bass-ish chords, just being like low passed, like super fast with a little bit of attack. And then this, the second one, is slowly going down and cut off while this is being plucked super fast. So you can hear as it goes on, it actually gets more, uh, more and more like uh, low passed. But again, the resonance just adds this cool little like, just makes it sound just super cool. That's basically all it is. So pretty, pretty cool. We have the ARP coming back from the intro. And then we have this like cool little drop lead. So basically just a, a simple little lead here. Again, the Infowler lead, also used in Sky Dreamer. But to go over it again, just a super, like a, not a, not super detuned, some unison, the vibrato thing I told you about, and the sync very, very slightly. Without the, the effects. Pretty much the same, just compressing it and just getting rid of the, the low frequencies. Very, very dry sounding. So yeah. Now, the actual meat of the drops, I would say, like these bass sounds. So all of these sounds is what makes the drop sound like the drop. So let's start off with the flangy Reese, which I would say is the main bass of the drop. So... So this is what it sounds like, basically without the uh, effects. Basically just a detuned saw, but the randomness is completely down. Just a simple little like saw, um, but when you turn the randomness down, it makes it sound super lasery because instead of all like the individual like saw things being random so it's super wide, it's all like the same thing. So it sounds like it's phasing, but it's like in a really cool way. So um, so basically the sound really comes from the effects, which without the patcher, just a little soft clipper uh, and then this filter, which was used in the drop, I believe. Uh, it's going to the bass bus, which basically, if you use this preset, if you make all your basses from your drop going to one, let's say, like, Camel Crusher, like, basically just compressing it to make it so all the bass sounds are the same. Very, very good, because you don't want, like, one bass sound sounding way louder than another one. So very, very useful, I would say. <laughs> Just to make sure all your bases are the same volume. And then we have this patcher, which is actually a Izzy Fat Rack. Unfortunately, I don't want to go into the specifics of this because it's just, it's all sorts of stuff. But basically, in short, it's not super complicated. Basically, it's just a bunch of compression and distortion, like back to back, like OTT, Camel Crusher, OTT, Camel Crusher. And then just whatever you want to slap on it, like a disperser or like a frequency shifter, like basically just going insane with whatever you want to do. I would definitely recommend making your own little like patcher plugin uh so you could just slap it on and call it a day because i've been doing that a lot so i'd recommend making your own little fat rack and maybe in the future we will go over our fat rack or like show you how to make one or just how to make your bases sound super like heavy basically again just compression distortion and a lot of that will make it sound really really good so you can hear without it and then with so that's how that sounds like uh, and then we have this growl layer, 
which basically it sounds pretty ugly on its own, but in context, it actually kind of works. Again, using the same uh, Izzy Fat Rag, big shout out to Izzy. Basically, all that the sound is, is this like weird like <laughs> wavetable that sounds really like dirty. And then just like adding some high pass and some resonance. Uh, then the, which you can hear, it sounds really weird without the hyper dimension, but you can hear there's just a compressor. But with the hyper dimension, you can hear it slowly like turns up the mix of the hyper, basically just making it super wider over time. So very, very cool. It's just a cool little like layer sound. And then just like a lot of like small notes, which is how you would do complex show, basically just having a bunch of like different sounds happening in super like fast succession. Basically, those are the, the first few layers. And then we have the sub, which is a another Izzy made thing. So shout out to, to Izzy again. Basically just a sub preset with a bunch of like uh, effects that you can do like saturation and stuff. You don't really need this. It's super easy to make a sub, but this is just to make it easier. So we don't have to like add a bunch of effects afterward. I would just recommend if you had the time to do it, go ahead and do it. It'll make your life easier in the future. But again, you don't have to do it. It's not that hard to just add a sub and add what you want to add to it. So basically it's just a sign that's a, a a little distorted so you can have more harmonics and then this overlap one which is basically the sub but being plucked which <laughs> i don't know how this happened basically just a short plucked version of the sub so you can hear both versions and then here's the other layer of the uh the the basses um, but basically it's just a pluck like a super fast bass pluck uh, I think actually it's supposed to sound like this, but just super short. Basically, it just looks like it's just two like saws, not unison, it's just being plucked with some white noise, some bit crush, some compression, this weird like EQ. Oh, it's basically just being low pass with the EQ. Uh, another EQ that makes it low pass like super fast. A separate sub layer, uh, also going through the fat rack. You'd hear that it sounds very, very... <laughs> Just very, very, like, weak sounding. But basically, if you get a nice fat rack, you can slap anything into there, and it'll just sound super cool. This, like, little mini sound is just being used to add, uh, to fill up more space, because it's, like, super small sounding. So here's all the basses together again. Uh, and then I would say the other important part are these filler basses, which really gives you the, the complexro or the color house-ish feeling. <laughs> You can hear with all the bass sounds. Basically, if you want to make like complexo or color house, using like small little like sounds like this bass stab or this, this like piano stab, it just makes it sound super cool. Highly recommend the Vengeance sample packs for that. They have tons of like small little like cool sounds that you can just kind of put in there and make it complexury. And then the rest of these, oh, this is also another Vengeance one, just a cool little like stab. And all these are just going to the same bus, just being all like super like compressed. And then like using the, uh, the funny Camel Crusher thing that I told you about. Basically just making sure all the sounds that are being put into there are the same volume. Just some EQing, um, and then these sounds are uh, from Izzy and Fowler, as you can see. And basically, this is using the new multi-band delay that came out in uh, FL Studio 21. Basically, just like put in like a song and just make it go through like a vocodex and a multi-band delay, or like granulize like your own like songs to make like a bunch of cool sounds like this. <laughs> Because the multiband delay makes it like super lasery and super like weird. And also with the vocodex, it makes it super like wide sounding and just super cool. Uh, very, very cool sound. <laughs> so shout out to Izzy. Again, she's very good at sound design. Basically, she just made a bunch of like delay test sounds. Here's another one. <laughs> This one is actually used in the second part of the drop. Very, this is, I would say, is the main sound of the second uh, part of the first drop. Just a bunch of small little pretty sounds. Uh, again, using the transient to really emphasize that this is the rhythm. So yeah, the second half is just the same. Uh, and then we have the schnoz pad from earlier. 
and the Vengeance Stab, also from earlier. Basically just to add more high-end, just so it's just not like basses, so you can hear with the all the stuff. I really like the sound in the background being extended. Because you could slightly hear it in the background when I was showing it off. So yeah, very, very cool stuff. And then we have like this cool like sharks crystallizer sound. Uh, in the like breaks, there's like a, instead of it being super full on, it actually is like in the background. Uh, and I believe, yeah, that's using the stereo delay and being turned down. Basically, I don't know exactly how Sharks does his like cool like crystallizer sounds, but honestly, I would I would probably just make like something simple like an ARP and like crystallize the hell out of it and maybe add some disperser or something. I don't know exactly how he does it, but uh, that's how I think it's made. Uh, but I could be totally wrong. But yeah, basically just a crystallizer-ish sound and uh, the downlifter and the ambience from before and the drop. And that's basically all the drop is. It's just a bunch of like cool little bass sounds, filler basses, just so you have just a bunch of stuff going on and to make it like just super interesting. Uh, again, and then the lead also in the second half to make it uh, to keep yourself interested because it's basically just the same thing again. But yeah, and now we have the second half of the drop, this section. Mostly the same things from the like from before, but just a different rhythm. Uh, we have the cool arp going on still, but we have the wubby saws. Basically, the chord progression of this part is just like staying on the main chord, like the F sharp minor chord. But every time it's about to go back to the F sharp minor chord, you go into like a, a semitone above, so it sounds like really, really cool. Like you have this, just a really, really cool motion that you can do. Uh, and then we have the growl from before, but being more like prominent because you also have the sub going and then you have this like cool like distorty uh, bass layer, which is basically just a very detuned square wave uh, that also has the randomness turned off. Also going through the, the fat rack. Basically, just take a square wave, compress, distort, make it all... You just do your whole fat rack nonsense. A very cool layer for all the basses here. So very, very cool. Uh, and then this is the main sound of this part, which I showed off before, this little sound. Basically, just doing a cool little rhythm with it. So very, very cool. Again, you have the transient thing going on, and then you have this like cool little like bass fill. Basically, how we made the basses in Skydreamer, if you want to watch that tutorial. Uh, but basically, just putting a bass and morphing it with a cool little pad, and this is what it sounds like. So yeah, just a cool little like lasery-ish sound, just to use as like a fill. Again, the schnoz pad, just a bunch of pad layers also being added here. You also have this vocal layer. Basically, it's just a pad and a vocal together, just being used in the background also to fill some more of the space. So very, very simple. Basically, just a lot of cool rhythms going on, a lot of cool sounds happening, uh, and being layered together, just making this all super uh, cool. Again, really love this like chromatic chord things here. Super cool. But anyways, this is basically all that's happening in this section. Uh, in the second half, it's just basically like pitching up a fifth. You can hear this is uh, what the bass sounds are doing. So it like goes off the uh, the F sharp minor uh, and goes. Basically, just to add some more variation. Uh, and then you have this cool little like chord ending section, which like wraps it up and leads you to the next section. Basically like a, a little mini chord theory. Sometimes when you do a major chord where a minor chord normally is, it makes it sound like super interesting and it like kind of gets you off guard, but it's kind of cool uh, if done right. So I believe that's what's done here. 
And then we have the lead coming back from over here. Basically all that this part is, again with all the, the, the layers as well with the pad. Here's all the layers together. And then we have the second half of this part. Uh, with a little like sub drop. Again, more of the same, just adding a little more fills to spice it up like this right here, which is the, just this sound, but being used over here with a cool little like slap bass sound. Just to spice it up more. Here's all the sounds together. Just more of the same here. Here's like the big variation part. Just to, just to make it super interesting and out of the blue, like, oh man, this is going all over the place. You can hear like that, or the little melody that this like little like sounds doing. Again, all these like small little sounds being used in the background as layers. And then this cool little lead sound here. Basically just like a pitch plucked like little square, kind of like an old virtual riot-ish sound. And then you have like vibrato, like slowly going in. So this is the main layer. And then you have this layer just so it's super wide as well. Just a very detuned saw, uh, but them together sounds really cool. And you can see at the very end, they, there's like a little cool harmony. And then it slowly gets reverbed out. The riser slowly going up. And that's pretty much the drop. Not super complicated, but just a lot of cool little sounds just happening all over the place and making it like basically just a bunch of cool little layers that kind of like work and fit together to make like a, a cool little complex show little drop. But anyways, here's the lead being reverbed out into the breakdown. Basically just being reverbed out and low passed. Just a bunch of stuff being low passed out for the transition into the uh, breakdown. Basically to start the breakdown here, just a sub drop. And then we have the cool arp coming back. Very slowly, it's just being low passed up and reverbed. It's very, very cool. Uh, and then we, this I would say is the main sound of the breakdown, just this cool little like AU5-ish type of like pluck arp thing. Basically just delay and an EQ, uh, but if I open up the sound, basically just a triangle wave that's being plucked with some distortion and some compression, and the distortion slowly goes up in uh, this part right here. Basically just using Serum and automating the distortion drive. Uh, so very cool. We have the sign plug from the intro again. Uh, and then we have this intro Reese also coming back, but slowly being like low passed in and volumed in, but it's also playing a different bass. So a different little bass melody there. Uh, most of the stuff coming back from the intro, like the pads, just a short little interlude here. And then we have this like cool little like chord section. So very, very cool. We have the pluck is like I said, the cool art from the intro, some 85 crashes. The clap from the intro as well, the crowd clap, uh, the stem impact, which is just like, I believe it's a sacro burst impact. Uh, we have this intro pad as well. Again, just the same stuff from the intro, the Mizu pad, basically everything the same. But instead of the bass being like this, this is the new chord progression. Yeah, so very, very cool. 
basically it's pretty normal but just like this part it goes from like this major key to another major key again like i talked about before instead of this last chord being minor like it should be uh i made it major just to make it sound super interesting uh, so very, very cool chord progression only used in the breakdown. Kind of wish I used it more, but it works. It's cool. Uh, and then we have this cool chip tune -y lead sound also reminisce of you know, like old virtual riot with a ton of delay, just a cool little, like fast little melody just to add more stuff going on. And at the end of here, it's like tape stops down. Uh, and then we have the lead sound. Uh, we have like this cool 8-bit-ish fill thing happening. So we have just a, a, a little like drum fill. Uh, again, more like cashmere toms. Uh, another short little mini sweep. Uh, and then we have this part, which I don't know how you would describe this part. I guess it's the part after the breakdown. I guess this part isn't technically a breakdown. It's kind of like a short little interlude. This is like the true breakdown, I would say. Um, and this is what it sounds like. So that's basically what that sounds like. Again, more four on the floor stuff, but different drums. But using the same uh, Vengeance New Disco sample pack. So just simple stuff, adding some rides, some open hi-hats, some loops, and then the floor on the floor, kick and snare. Here's the kick on its own, and the snare on its own. And this part, if you haven't already heard, it's definitely inspired from energy drink and like old Nitro Fun as well. Just wanted to make something like super nostalgic and fun. So to go into the details, the, the cool ARP again, of course, and then we have like these weird, like cool, I would say Nitro Fun inspired, like 8-bit-ish uh, sections to fill over like this growl sound. So we have this cool little like hat little loop where it's basically just white noise, but it's being panned left and right super fast. Uh, and it has a little bit of attack and there's just cutting off the lows. Uh, it's also a bit crushed. Just so it sounds even more like retro-y. But yeah, the main part of this is basically just add like a nice high-end like panned layer from left to right uh, to layer with this sound. Basically just another like super plucky square that's being like super fast like pitch down up and down. Uh, and then we have this LFO tool being used as the pan so it goes back and forth. So it's super, super wide sounding. So that sound linked with this sound just makes it super just chip tuney and like 8-bitty. We have the transient layers also. Just to really emphasize the rhythm. Again, we have like the pads and stuff from the intro, the schnoz pad, the, the sharks like crystallizer layer. We have the vocal layer also from the drop uh, with the downlifter and stuff. So basically, the main sound of this whole section is the, the growl bass sound. So basically, not much going on. So this is the main sound, this little growl sound. Uh, so basically, this growl is made uh, basically just OTT and then our fat rack. Uh, here's what it sounds like without it. Basically, all that the sound is is the monster wave table with some detune, uh, turning down the randomness. Like I said, been doing that a lot. Uh, and then using the band reject filter to make it sound super lasery. Uh, and then we have uh, some tube distortion, some hyper dimension to make it super wide. Uh, and then we have the compressor and then this EQ, which is making it, it sound like, ow. It's basically like the resonance peak here, but instead of doing it here, it's like in the EQ. So you can hear if I change this around. Just something really cool. And then turning up the, the high end a little here. 
basically all that sound is and then this sound is basically just the same thing but instead of it being super like heavy it's like plucky so if i can find it basically just just being plucked here also the unison is way more down than the other one and the randomness is completely down same things band reject everything's pretty much the same there's also a like short little like pluck sound in the beginning but just super low down. Uh, basically just using the master tune and making basically just a super fast like pitch going down thing is the best way I could describe it, I guess. You can hear it without it. You can see it adds a little bit of a transient. Yeah, that's basically what these sounds are, the main sounds of this part. <laughs> Uh, and then we have this other sound, which is a weird little like acid bass. It's basically just more of the same, uh, but you can see it's a little different. It's basically just the unisons turned down a little bit more. The wavetable is more like sine instead of like sai. So you can see the wavetable position basically just changed. Same band reject, same distortion, but a little bit more distorted actually. This is shorter because it's more like acidy instead of it being super long. Yeah, just a short little like sound add uh, as a fill between the two uh, layers. Uh, but that's basically all that this main sound is. More of the same, but we have this like super compressed like piano. Uh, I've actually been doing this sound a lot and pretty much like most of our new stuff has this like cool like I call it the Nanco piano or the Kosaki uh, piano but basically it's just a super high reverb and then you have the OTT after it so basically the reverb gets compressed so the reverb is super loud uh, but it's super cool and it's very inspired from Kosaki or Nanco or even Marsix. It's basically just a like grand piano sound font. You can use really any piano. Um, basically just doing this little melody, but having an octave higher. It's a little bit delayed. Basically all that this part is. We also have the Wubby saws come back. Uh, and then we have this section, which is sort of like a build-up section to the last drop. So basically just using it as a build-up, we have the pluck coming back from the breakdown. Uh, we have the bass, instead of it going it's just uh, Then we have this like slap bass sound uh, from Contact. Scarby J bass slap. Very, very nice. I use the slap bass a lot. Uh, this acid bass. Also from uh, earlier like I showed before, uh, and then adding a bunch of more sounds, more of the same pad stuff, more of the background stuff, the schnoz pad, uh, the downlifters, all that stuff. Basically the same, and we have this riser. Uh, and then we have the Mamu Dofu Arp, which this is actually from uh, these saw chords and the Mamu Dofu Arp is actually stems from a unreleased Infaller song. So just super like low passed, like cool little like ARP sound. Uh, so this cool little like saw uh, chord to make it super suspenseful for the end. And then we have the, uh, the pre-drop. Uh, we have the pluck from before, from the, the first uh, pre-drop. We have the saw chords, this is basically just playing the, the root note of the chord. And then we have this cool little like complexo fill. Uh, and then this like particles vocal by uh, Mimi. So big shout out to uh, Miss Lena. Just a bunch of short little sounds happening super fast. Uh, you can hear we have the schnoz pad, this bass sound, this other bass sound, like this like slap bass basically. 
the background vocal sound that I showed off earlier, and then the other schnoz pad. So basically just a bunch of cool little like short chord and bass stabs. Uh, and then we have the, the particles vocal here. Particles. Uh, and you can hear all the different layers. Particles. 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 Uh, so basically, it's just Miss Lena saying particles, but a bunch of effects on. We have like OTT. This one is actually a text-to-speech saying particles, though. Particles. Uh, and then we have this one. Particles. Which is basically, like, I believe either vocodext or it's morph. Probably doing like a, a bass pad layer combo. Particles. Uh, and then we have... Particles. Particles. Which is probably just like the vocal being like pitched down, just making it sound super robotic. And then we have the main like Miss Lena layer. Particles. Which you, you can hear Miss Lena saying particles. 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 Uh, so yeah, basically just all those layer together. Particles. Just this cool little sound. Uh, and unfortunately, the last drop's actually in a separate project because it was originally made on its own for something else. But funny enough, it was like in the same key uh, and almost in the same tempo. So it just worked super well and I just made it fit better anyways. So I will show that off now. And here is the final drop project. As you see, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of different layers. Uh, you can hear that there was also another intro idea in here. But anyways, this is the second drop. So here is the drop, and you can hear there's all sorts of just small little detail sounds. So here are the drums, more of the cashmere toms, using the Fox Stevenson drums this time. Uh, you can use the snare, and here, again, is the kick. Also used another snare layer, uh, basically just using this snare as the tail. Uh, also with the pre-shift clap, or snare sound here. Just to add a little bit more of a pre-shift to this part. Also with ride samples, and some closed hat samples from Vengeance New Disco. Then we have this weird sound, which is basically just like some random whip that we had granulized to heck. It's a cool little granulized sound being used as the layer. And then we have the main bass sound. We have this cool little you could hear without the uh, Izzy Fat Rack and uh, low pass EQ and sub reverb, I'm guessing for later. Uh, you can see it's more of the same uh, like the other basses, but with the distortion using the stomp box, distortion, more EQ stuff. So you get like more of like a, a cool little rhythm, like meow wow. Again, with some hyper dimension and the band reject. So very, very cool. And then this phase uh, verb wavetable uh, being bend uh, plus and minus as well. Uh, and then we have this cool like side trance E sound here. So turn off the <laughs> very, very funny sounding without the uh, the fat rack. Again, more of the same stuff. The band reject, the hyper dimension, uh, the uh, low pass being plucked, but it's slowly being raised in cutoff you can see that both of these are doing the cutoff thing but this one's is the pluck one and this is the one that's slowly going up and cut off so it goes plucky to like sustained so here's like the main sound uh, using retro talking as the wavetable moving the wavetable position and a little bit of detune and use and then we have this layer which is basically just like a fifth that's super high pitched as the layer that's slowly coming in. And that's basically it. And then you have the actual side trance sound. Just a basic saw that's being like plucked uh, with some uh, down sample. Just to add more high end to it. Being super compressed, uh, increasing the low end frequencies as well with the EQ. And again, using the fat rack. 
basically just a bunch of cool sounds happening at once. So here's the layer so far. So that's the layer so far. We have the 85 pad from before. And then we have this other pad, which I forget what this pack is from. So just another cool pad. I believe these are just going to the same one, just cutting the lows. Also with the uh, transient clicky from the other one. We have more of the funny sharks crystallizer-ish sound. Uh, and then we have this sound, which is also from that huge, like, long granulizer thing. Uh, we then have more of the Izzy delay test using the multiband delay. Very, very cool sounds. We also have this sound. Which is a, I believe, this sound is pretty old. It's basically just like a, a pad probably being morphed with maybe another pad. I forget how exactly, but you can hear there's a little bit of a attack. So instead of sounding super plucky, it sounds super like womp instead of like a bump. So very, very cool. All these little sounds together, just creating a little like atmosphere thing. So very, very cool. This pad is actually doing a lot of work. Just adding like a cool high-end layer with this. Uh, so that's basically all that's happening here. And then you have some like filler stuff. Like this cool little like offbeat tone sound. And then we also have like this cool little like bass slide. For, like a slap bass bass slide. Uh, and then we have some like fidget house sounds. Basically these sounds are like low pass like 80s or 70s songs. So very very cool. And fun fact, this is actually uh, this is actually the sample used in uh, Virtual Riot Continue. This is the sound that he used for the intro. So yeah, basically just using that as like a cool little like vintage fill, and it also works very well with this bass. And that's basically all that is. We also have this bass. So here's what the sound sounds like without all the effects on them. You can see it sounds very silly sounding. It's basically just a saw, detuned a little bit, turned down the random, the basically just the same band reject thing, a little bit of uh, resonance and some cutoff. The funny little like EQ thing, so it sounds super like valoey. Uh, also using the pitch, so it slowly goes up in pitch. And the reason why all these effects are off is because there's just a lot of like stuff at the end of the sound that happened because of all the OTTs together. But basically this is just like a Skrillex e-growl. And basically we're just using the fat rack like I said before, you know, compression, distortion. And there's just a ton of OTTs to add like a bunch of just like the OTT sound basically. So if I turn off this... <laughs> You can see it's getting somewhere, but the main sound to make it sound super valoey, like that cool little like Skrillex E like high end part, is a uh, Fab Filter Volcano 2, which basically you can hear the reason why it's like not on all the time. But yeah, basically you just get like a, a super resonant like peak, like low pass, and just go crazy with like like before all the OTTs and your like compression and distortion, and you can just make some really cool sounds. So very, very cool. Um, but that's basically how that sound was made. You can see that it then goes into the major chord. Some more of the same stuff, but we have like a cool little lead here. So if I turn off the effects. We have this like, <laughs> actually using GMS for this lead, but there's actually a lot of cool sounds. If you own FL and you own GMS, a lot of cool sounds in GMS actually, like this lead sound. Which is basically just like a sign, I'm gonna guess with some harmonics, that's being like, like a very short legato thing. So it slides. Very cool lead sound. I don't know what the lead sound is called. I think this is it. Mirage TE. I think that's the sound. It's actually a bass sound, but it's being used as a lead. And then we also have this, which is basically just a Harmer saw. That has a little bit of pluck. 
and then just being layered together. Basically just an octave up bleed layer uh, with some reverb, some OTT, and some EQing. And then this part, this bass sounds gets changed just a slight, just slightly. You can hear basically just the same sound from before, but it goes up and then it goes back down, the low pass. Uh, and then you have this also layered on top of that though, with the side trance bass and then this weird like high end, like ugly sound, which is basically just this like weird, like ugly-ish wavetable. It's then being FM'd from B with a super high pitched like sound. Just like the super high pitched screechy sound, but it works really well as a layer to the main bass. Yeah, and just some distortion or uh, some compression. That's pretty much it. And then we have Jono's Broken Hard Drive, which, uh, funny story, uh, if you don't know who Jono is, it's uh, the owner of Exabolt, and his hard drive, he ordered a hard drive, and it came broken, and here's the video of it. And we thought that was so cool sounding that we actually used it as a layer. So you can hear it as the layer there. It's very, very quiet, but just it just adds its like glitchy background sound. <laughs> Again, more of the same stuff, and then we have this like cool little like bell sound, which is just a spire preset. I forget where. I guess from this. That that's the sample pack if you want it, uh, or the the library. But yeah, this is basically all it is. So it's basically just. If you remember the Nanco piano or the Kosaki piano from the other project, you'll know the higher pitched octave layer is just slightly delayed just to create more of like a plucky -ish sound. And I believe everything's still the same. This sound slightly changed because it's major instead of the, the minor. And then we have another switch up, the triplet section. So very, very cool. If I just solo all the drums here, pretty much the same, but instead it's four on the floor. The closed hats are now in triplets instead of... Uh, we have the sound from before. Like just some weird just layer sounds. Uh, and then we have the main like psy trance layer. It just sounds so weird is the best way to describe it. So if I turn off the effects, it's basically just the same psy trance sample from before, but with a flanger. So if I take off the flanger, turn back the effects on. Pretty much the same, but it also has this like layer coming in every uh, every other bar here, like a, a cool little like fifth. The main sound of this is basically the flanger, which is basically just the depth being like automated. We have like this one, which is basically, instead of it being super like soft, it's just like, it gets more wide, it's more sustained. It's a very, very cool little like side trance sound. Basically, if you want to make your side trance basses sound really interesting or cool, you want like the flanger stuff going on, uh, frequency shifter to make it like sound like really cool and interesting over the time. So it's not just the same bass sound over and over again. Uh, so yeah. And then we have some bass fills. <laughs> which is the same bass as this, just being low-passed. And then you have uh, this sound from before, 
uh, but reversed. So it sounds really cool reversed. So pretty cool. Uh, we have the A5 pads just coming back in. Just a lot of cool like pad samples happening. We also have this one. We have the fidget house stuff going on as well. And the Jono broken hard drive. You can hear the little beep sound being used as a fill. It's so very, very cool. Again, more of the granulizer stuff. But this like cool little like vocal bit. Again, more of this like cool sound that was used earlier, like this. And then we have When Could I See You Again, Vocal Chops, which is from that song from Alice City. Yes, it's that song, and yes, these are the vocal chops from that. Uh, if I turn down the pitch, you'll be able to actually hear what it is. Sounds very like Alice City. So basically, I just turned up the pitch to the right key and then just turned down the format. So it just sounds like nothing like Owl City. So just cool little vocal chop. And then just this cool little sound earlier uh, that we showed off. Again, using the, the funny multi band delay. And then we have this like weird, like short sound from like this Nero bass that Izzy made. So also using as like a transient layer. And then we have this other bass layer, which Izzy made. I don't know exactly how she made it, but it's basically just another bass layer, which just changes every other. It also has like a nice little like laserish sound at the end. Basically just chopping up her bass so it fits in triplets. So just a nice little background lead layer. And then we have this other Izzy little like loop. My guess on how she made this sound was she probably took a song or thing that she put in and just like put Bit Crush on it and like made it and like to it like a little rhythm. So yeah, just a lot of like little sounds like that to fill up the background. Again, we have this like a uh, little pluck sound, which I really wanted this to be in the side trance part because I love like side trance songs that have like a little like pluck like on the offbeat. I just feel like that's so cool. You hear more of the uh, the when can I see you again chops. And then we have this like saw layer being used here. So very, very distorted sound. And it's actually a addictive keys sound. Uh, you can see it's the glow stick sound from the Mark I set. Just a very cool layer. It's very, very cool. And then we have this other layer. Which is the, the cool little like resonant peak stuff. If I turn off the random. So just very, very cool. Again, just a super unison saw, random, turn down, and then the resonance peak uh, that's being low passed. Uh, you can hear the layers together. So very, very cool. More of the same, more like cool fidget house fills. And then more of the same of the chord progression. But instead of it doing what it did before, where it just played the root note, it plays the cool little like major thing in the breakdown. You can see it's the same F sharp like root note, but instead of it being the minor chord, it's the major chord. So very, very cool. And that's basically it. And then you have the, the Jono hard drive, which is just the, the start of him starting the hard drive. Adds this like cool little like perk sound. It's really cool. Layered with this. Very, very cool. And then the bass sound just gets reverbed out. That's basically all what this drop is. So let's go back to the main project. So very, very cool. Um, and then we have like a riser here. Not really much going on here. The riser's being reversed with the reverb of the bass. That we have this like cheeky little like Easter egg in the background. Which if I open up Wave Candy, you'll be able to see what this is. If I turn on this, you can see it says in Fowler. Look at that. Look how cool. So yeah, just like, the cool little Easter egg in the background while all this plays. 
maybe I'll do a tutorial on how you do this, but there's also just a tons of tutorials that just show you how to make, like, turn images into, like, sound so you can, like, kind of hide stuff in the background. So very, very cool. Uh, and then we have Jono's broken hard drive once again for the outro. Basically, I just took that sample and just stretched it like a ton because uh, it sounded really, really cool. Uh, we have the downlifter as well. Uh, and then this is the transition into Twilight. Basically just the pad from Twilight, but slowly going up in volume. But yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's the whole entire particles breakdown. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial video. I know I haven't done one in a while. I won't lie, been very busy, but also lazy. Genuinely, thanks so much for all the support in the last year. Uh, I, it's actually insane to see all the like people like following and, and seeing the videos and the, the, the music that we're uploading. So thank you guys so much. I couldn't be happier. Uh, you guys are genuinely so awesome and hopefully I'll keep doing these tutorial videos after like big releases or just releases in general So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video or learned anything I, I really hope I was able to help you guys out again And yeah, thanks again so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in either the next music video that we upload or another tutorial And yeah, I can't wait to see you guys again. So thanks for watching. Bye